Game one is tomorrow, and the only thing that's on my mind, Derek Lively's back. It has been reported a few days ago on this channel that Derek Lively was participating in practice with the team, full contact, and at the time, Jason Kidd did say that they're going to take it day by day over the next few days, see how things look, and it was he, he was still listed as questionable ahead of game one. However... We got some new reports that show that Derek Lively is looking better than ever and he is ready to roll. But don't take just my word for it. A few of his teammates had a lot of things to say about Derek Lively. And we're going to break down those quotes as well as just take a closer look at Derek Lively and see what exactly he brings to this Dallas Mavericks team ahead of tomorrow's Game 1 against the Los Angeles Clippers. But how's it going everybody? My name is Marcel Martin. This is Mavericks Digest bringing you the latest news on everything Mavericks related. And before we get started with today's video... 57.6% of you guys watching are not subscribed. That number is slowly going down day by day. However, if you want to stay up to date on anything Mavericks related, our live streams, our giveaways, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a single thing that we do. But like I said in the intro, ladies and gentlemen, Derek Lively is back. I reported a few days ago that he was participating in practice. He's no longer in a soft in a soft cast. He's no longer on crutches. He is with the team practicing especially with that second unit as he is going to be a spark plug for us off the bench giving giving Daniel Gafford some relief and some quality minutes so he can rest as Derek Lively Daniel Gafford are just 1A 1B they're two sides of the same coin it feels like when one player's off it, it doesn't matter because it feels like the, that guy never left as, da as Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively are just a great tandem of bigs that their, their box score may not pop out at you. They don't really stuff the stat sheet on a, on a regular basis. But that doesn't matter. We have guys like Luka Doncic. We have guys like Kyrie Irving. And sometimes P.J. Washington or maybe Tim Harvey Jr. Who will do that? Who, who will add rebounds? Who will add points? But the, but the, the thing is... Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively do everything that we just haven't had from our center positions in a long time. That's an interior presence, blocking, the pick and roll, and active feats. The way that Daniel Gafford gets down on, on the fast break as a big man, he's not some lumbering a lumbering big who's too slow to go to go on a fast break. He's always there ready to go, and so is Derek Lively, a 20-year-old rook, rookie who... You would think that he would need time to adjust to the NBA before he gets a starting role. You would think a starting position normally goes to a player drafted like maybe one through third, but that doesn't matter because Derek Lavi has impressed everybody from the jump, and the fact that he will be back for game one is huge. But let's break down some stuff right here. Breaking. Jason Kidd on Derek Lavi's return to the court, he said everything is trending in the right direction, and he's ready to roll. D-Live is back, baby. Jason Kidd sees it. He believes it. We all do. And like I said, he was practicing with the second unit, and he was looking just like he never missed a day, like he never skipped a beat with this team. Derek Lively is going to become so huge for this Dallas Mavericks team. We saw what happened when he was out, and we relied heavily on Daniel Gafford. Daniel Gafford, some games would go into foul trouble. We would have to result to either Maxi playing the five. I think PJ played the five a little bit. Or we have to go to the man Dwight Powell to play the five, which it's fine. However, it's not Derek Lively. Having Daniel Gafford is a godsend because if we didn't trade for him, I'm not too sure how we would look at the five position without Derek Lively. But the fact that we have Daniel Gafford, the fact that Derek Lively is back, we are back to being able to play 48 minutes of bully ball because these two don't quit. The blocks, the pick and rolls, the alley-oop slam dunks. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be electric. They're going to provide an energy. Both of them are going to provide an energy that this Dallas Mavericks team will need come playoff time in those crunch time minutes when it's down to the wire. Throw up a Hail Mary and watch Derek Lively or Daniel Gafford just bring it down and secure the dub. But let's take a look right here. The man, De Derek Lively, 55 games as a rookie. He started for the majority of those. 8.8 .8 points, 6.9 rebounds, 1.1 assists, shooting 74.7% .7 from the floor and 50.6% from the free throw line. As I've always said, that free throw percentage will either improve or he'll learn how to be effective without having to go to the line. But 74% from the floor is insane. And we're going to compare him to Daniel Gafford in a little bit here. But I just want to talk about Derek Lively, how as a rookie, I don't think it's hard for me to really remember the last time before, before Luka, before Dirk, when was last time we had a rookie who filled in a spot off the bat ready to go? Like I said, obviously Luka Dantas came in ready ready to lead us to the promised land. I get that. Dirk, same way. Jason Kidd, same way. We've, we've had excellent players. But as far as a center position, a rookie that we trusted who wasn't highly touted, he wasn't a top three player, wasn't a top three pick, 
but he was a player that we knew that we needed, that we knew that he would fit this system, who would become a sponge and learn from the team, learn from Tyson Chandler, who's always in the gym with them, practicing and, help, and helping him get better. And now we have someone like Daniel Gafford, who's a little bit more seasoned than Derek Lively, who can be that mentor on the court for him and in the locker room. It's amazing. It's what you love to see. But this right here, Derek Jones Jr. on Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively. Saying with Gaff and D-Live, we have one who starts and one who comes off the bench. There's no dip. There's no lapse when one goes out, one comes back in. They're almost the same person. With D-Live, he learned a lot this year, and he did a wonderful job. I mean, I can say it till the cows come home that Derek Live and Daniel Gaff are the same player, and that there is no dip, and that the production that you get from one, you'll get from the other. But also the teammates see it, and I think that's going to be key for us come playoff time because obviously the first round against the Clippers, Zubak. Uh, Daniel Tice, you know, they got some bigs. They may even go small ball on us. And I've seen people talk about how worried they are about the Clippers going small ball. And honestly, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried because are the Clippers the best small ball team in the league? I wouldn't think so. I think the Clippers are very inconsistent. They're up and down. You may catch them on a good night. You may catch them on a bad night. It all depends, right? However, if they want to go small, that's fine. I would say we still go big. If they want to run small ball lineup, okay. You better shoot all your threes because you're not meeting the landlord down low. You're not meeting Derek Lively, D-Live down low. You're not seeing it. I don't think they have a single big who can hold back Daniel Gafford or Derek Lively without fouling the crap out of them. Those two will be instrumental in the first round. And if and, if, and when we make it to the second round, if it's the Thunder, who they got? Derek Lively already dunked on Chet Holmgren earlier this year. Daniel Gafford owns them. Like I'm not worried about a thing. I'm not worried about a thing, but the teammates had more to say. Daniel Gafford on the center duo of him and Derek Lively saying, if one guy falls down, the next guy steps up. The one-two punch. If I get into early foul trouble, I know I got somebody that's going to come in and pick up right where I left off. And I'm telling you, people, I'm telling you, folks, it's a beautiful thing to have two bigs that are the same. And again, their box scores may not wow you. They may not go for 20 and 10 for a full season. That's not that's not necessarily what you want with this team. As long as they can get you some quality points, some quality blocks, and quality rebounds, we're good. We're in the money. I've said it many times on this channel. The center position has been one of our weakest positions over the last few years where the last time we saw the Clippers, what, two, three years ago, we had Boban Marjanovic, who I do love. Boban is is a guy that you, it's hard to hate. I love the guy. However, we were relying on Boban as our starting big. We also had Willie Cauley-Stein, Moses Brown. Uh, the list goes on of bigs who just came and gone and just didn't work out. It's great to know that we have a tandem of bigs who, when they do their fusion dance, it's like Shaquille O'Neal, prime Shaq. It's like Tim Duncan if he wanted to play the five position. It's like, like, come on, the list goes on. These two guys combined are just phenomenal. The fact that they both shoot about 70% from the floor, that tells you right there that when they're at the rim, the touch is too good. Their touch around the rim is immaculate. And for Derek Lively to have a touch like that around the rim as a rookie is huge his ceiling is high potential through the roof and he's only going to get better in the fact that we're going into the playoffs with a team this stacked this early in his career he's going to absorb so much and become such a better player down the road that will extend our window of of contention even longer and i I'm just, I'm just so excited for it because Daniel, I'm sorry, for Derek Lively, he is going to be a cornerstone piece of this team for years to come. But we got more that we got to break down. The little side-by-side -side comparison of Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford. Now, quick look at it. Yeah, Daniel Gafford, he's got more games played, points, rebounds, assists, steals, box. Cool. If you take a closer look, Derek Lively, who's about five years younger than Daniel Gafford, is not that far behind. He played less games. He dealt with injury, the loss of his mother. However, only about, what, three points less, about a rebound and a half less. Assists are somewhat the same. Steals are about the same. About, what, half a block less than Daniel Gafford while shooting 74% from the floor as opposed to Daniel Gafford's 72%, only 2% difference. Neither of them will dare shoot that three ball, but we're hoping for Derek Lavi's long reigns to soon come to fruition. We've seen the videos of him in open court just able to knock down a three. I think he actually hit quite a few threes in his uh in his workout with the Mavericks before we drafted him. So we know his bag's pretty deep. However, he is deadly from about 5, 10 feet. Shooting only 50% from the free throw line as opposed to Daniel Gafford's 67%. But regardless, it's 1A and 1B. It, it's, it's like stepbrothers. 
they're the same person. You'll love to see it. It's going to become instrumental, and I can't stress this enough, how there really isn't going to be a team in our playoff run who will put out a big that can handle both Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively. You might be able to stop one. You may get one of them in foul trouble. That's fine. Tag team them in. Boom. And you got another one. It's It may be easy to deal with one. It won't be easy to deal with two. And that's the luxury that we have going to these playoffs. So, with that being said, I am excited for game one tomorrow because Daniel, I'm sorry, Derek Lively is back. He's going to be back coming off the bench. And we've talked about how deep are we really going to go in the playoffs because we've got Dante Exum, who definitely will see play. We got D Derek Lively, who's back. We got Josh Green, not too sure about him or Jaden Hardy. I expect to see Tim Hardaway Jr. and Maxi Kleba, but who knows? Maybe we go eight deep, maybe we go nine deep, but in the playoffs, that that one little player difference definitely does matter. Guys are going to going to play heavy minutes, so it's got it, it's going to be a next man up mentality. When your number's called, you got to be ready to go. But I'm fairly certain that this Dallas Mavericks team will go very far in the playoffs. However, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for making this far to the video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a single thing that we do. Check out our Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. We are doing a free jersey giveaway. Only way to enter is become a channel member. So consider becoming a channel member. Until uh, next time, y'all take care. Peace.